There's been an ongoing conversation with regards to a family that decided to put all their information on blast on the internet. Okay, if you guys haven't been keeping up with this, I'll try to update you. This is Ben Hart, and this is his daughter. I believe her name is Maddie. Maddie is a TikTok influencer. She is also a screenwriter. But the way today's video is going to go is this is by far the illest screen written story I've ever heard in my life. Okay, so Maddie put up a TikTok, uh, basically uh, attempting to roast her dad because he, the way she framed it, he left their family to go and pursue being a professional B-boy, okay? And the dad was like, hey, that was like a cool video, but this this stuff isn't accurate. This is him actually breakdancing right here on, if you can see on the top of the screen. But he's like, this isn't accurate, though I became a breakdancer way, 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 way after, okay? So the feud is wild, but Ben's video response today about the legal proceedings and what happened during the divorce is crazy. So long story short, I'm, I'm really trying to condense this for you. He basically provides receipts that, you know, he was there for Maddie and her brothers and sisters. He puts all this video out. Maddie calls him a, a deadbeat, wasn't involved, yada, yada, yada. This has created all sorts of drama amongst different packs of the internet and who was and wasn't. And if I'm honest, like it, it got Maddie out here looking crazy because the dad just pulled all the receipts and is like, look, like this is me and my daughter's life. This is us hanging out. I live down the street. As they became teenagers, I didn't want to hang, you know, they didn't want to hang out with me, but I was around. I went to the graduations. Okay. And this, so he posts all these pictures. Let me know if I'm forgetting anything. I think I'm getting all the information right. And so they've been, they've been having this back and forth. Okay. He provides receipts that he paid her mom out $4 million dollars in the divorce proceedings, and then I want to say an additional $469,000 in the alimony and the child support. So like, this is the breakdown of all these numbers. Okay, he was doing well. He was doing well, but she kept taking him to court and taking him to court because she thought he was doing too well. And so what you guys are going to hear of his specific story with the divorce proceedings is crazy, okay? This is stuff that is straight out of a fresh and fit novel, okay? This is stuff that the lead attorney would be like, ha, I told you. Like, all the red pillars, this is chef's kiss. This is their uh, story. So I'm going to play you guys what happened in his divorce proceedings, which is like an incredible uh, screenplay in and of itself. This this is incredible, okay? So again, this is them going back and forth, and he's basically not providing receipts, and he's like, look, you've been told something about what you think happened between our your childhood and our relationship, that just isn't true. And he provides the reason why. And he, and he gets into the details about the court case in the, in the divorce proceedings, okay? And so just buckle up. This is some crazy, crazy stuff. We're older by this point. Peter was in college. Tori was a senior in high school. Maddie was also in high school. Olivia okay, so, so let me walk you guys through the divorce stuff because this is the craziest stuff. Because Betsy's family were there. And then I didn't let go with nothing would buy peace. Wow, was I dollars at the get go? And okay, so here he gets into the, the the details of the split. Now, of course, I agreed to all of this, and I told you I made literally every mistake in a divorce that a guy can possibly make. I thought giving Betsy one point eight million dollars at the get go and leaving myself with nothing would buy peace. Wow, was I wrong? And everyone told me I was absolutely insane to agree to this, but I wanted Betsy to be a stay at home mom, as she had been. We agreed that that would be best for the kids. I wanted the kids to have a mom at home when they came home from school. So I didn't want Betsy to have to work while the kids were still young. And so he's like, look, she was a stay-at-home mom when we were together. I'm going to set her up to be a stay-at-home mom after we've parted ways. He doesn't get into the particulars of whose fault and who cheated first on each other. But a lot of these divorces, it's usually both people making a mess of these situations. I know my mom and dad's situation, both people made a mess, but I didn't really understand my mom's mess until I grew up and confronted my dad about this stuff. And then he gave me his side and that they both made a mess of the situation. Okay, so listen to what he goes on to describe. I wasn't worried about money. I was confident I could always make back the money. I grew up in Vermont and had kind of a hippie mindset. Money's never been my focus. I just do what I do and enough money just seems to roll in. What I did not count... That, that, that must be nice, man. Gosh darn it. This man just, I just do what I do and money rolls in. That's a, that's a crazy way to live life. Props to you, uh, Ben. Count on was Betsy moving from Virginia to Illinois with the kids almost immediately. I couldn't move to Illinois immediately. She sold our house instantly, packed up the kids and left Virginia for Illinois. Basically instantly. Yikes. I also did not predict that Betsy would issue subpoenas to all my clients to find out if I might be hiding money and assets from her. In other words, 
Even though I agreed to give her everything, she didn't believe it. She thought there was more money to be found. Money I So he gives her millions, okay? Agrees to I want to say 12,000 in alimony and she then subpoenas his entire client list because she believes there was more money that he was hiding from her. He was stashing away somewhere or some hidden sources of income that she didn't know about. So she subpoenaed all of my clients. Her lawyers wanted to depose my clients. This caused me to lose most of my business. No client wants to be involved in a divorce legal proceeding or get deposed. So my clients ran for the tall grass fast. And by the way, she's doing this again. In the wake of this Maddie video flap, she's been phoning my clients again in hopes of torpedoing my current business, just like she was able to do in 2004 and 2005. So Betsy moved instantly from Virginia to Illinois during the separation, before the divorce was even completed. And I would make the trip to Illinois about once a month or every six weeks to see the kids. And the plan was to do this until I was in a financial position to be able to move to Illinois. And of course I was broke at that point. I had just let Betsy have all of the marital assets. Well, 97%. Now remember that $1.8 million that she was due at the conclusion of the marriage in 2005? Well, I was $100,000 short. I would agreed to give her an additional $100,000 on top of all of our marital assets. Well, I wasn't able to pay it because remember she had destroyed my business with all of her subpoenas. So she and her attorneys filed what is called a show cause petition with the court. A show cause petition. What is a show cause petition? Well, this means I must prove that I am not in contempt of court. And if I am in contempt of court, meaning if I don't pay up, pay the 100,000, I could go to jail for contempt of court. Okay, this is crazy. So she gets the majority of the funds. This is all according to Ben. Maybe Betsy has a different story. And then she takes him to court for the additional 100000 and is trying to get him to provide all of the details, okay? And what happens next is going to blow your mind. So I walked into court for this show cause hearing. I had no legal representation at that point because I was out of money and couldn't pay lawyers anymore because Betsy had torpedoed my business with her subpoenas to all of my clients. This judge was a woman by the name of Judge Leslie Alden. I Shout out Judge Leslie Alden, okay? I knew the instant that she looked at me that I was dead in the water. She had my tax returns and bank statements. It looked to her like I was making quite a bit of money. But that was before my clients went away due to all of Betsy's subpoenas that were arriving at their offices from Betsy's legal team. Judge Alden bellowed at me. When will you pay Mrs. Hart the $100,000 you owe her, Mr. Hart, she said from the bench. She sounded exactly like Judge Judy on TV. Mm. I answered, as soon as I can, Your Honor, I need to build my business back up. Judge Alden asked me again, when will you pay Mrs. Hart the $100,000 you owe her, Mr. Hart? I answered, well, as soon as I can, Your Honor, I need to build my business back up. She asked me one more time, Mr. Hart, when will you pay Mrs. Hart the $100,000 you owe her? I answered, I don't know what else to say except I'll pay her the money as soon as I can. Her next words were, bailiff, remand Mr. Hart to the custody of the sheriff. Oh my gosh. So she has him put in contempt of court and the sheriff takes him away yeah this is beyond jerry springer so this is crazy now i didn't care much about money when i let my ex when i let betsy have all her stuff but i sure could have used a hundred thousand dollars right then mm. lesson it's easy to sing kumbaya give peace a chance and to say you don't care about money until you actually need money to stay out of jail the next thing you know <laughs> i was sitting in a large holding cell in the fairfax county virginia jail with a large crowd of inmates waiting to be processed to include ms-13 gang members and members wow. of the notorious R Street Gang in Washington, D.C. I was still dressed in my business suit when I entered the holding cell. This large holding cell contained about 40 other inmates. The jail door clanked behind me. An enormous 300-pound black guy called Big Daddy said to me, Hey, what are you in here for with that nice suit, red tie, and shiny shoes? Some kind of computer fraud, bank fraud, or something? I said, Nah, I came up short on money I owe to my ex-wife. And I lost off into my story about what had just happened in court. Big Daddy, the 300-pound guy, called the other inmates over to hear the story. Big Daddy was clearly the dominant figure in the group. His voice was loud and booming. Plus, he was huge. So they all gathered round. Some of them looked like they were from the movie Menace to Society. Hey, guys, come over here. And this man referenced Menace to Society. So he's in jail now. He's in a county jail around, according to him, MS-13 members, People that quote unquote look like from the, the movie Menace to Society, which is kind of a sus thing to say, but okay, I get it. And they're all gathering around because they're shocked on the reason he's in jail. Listen to this, Big Daddy said. This story is great. I was sitting on a cement bench next to Big Daddy. We were all there for a few hours because life in jail is not a fast moving process. And they seemed to like me. They were all laughing. 
including the guy with the Nazi swastika tattoo on his face. They couldn't believe I agreed to pay my ex $1.8 million, plus $12,000 per month, and that I was still $100,000 short. Well, actually, I was more than $100,000 short. Judge Leslie Alden had also awarded Betsy attorney's fees, plus interest. Shh. So the My bill gosh. I owed her at this point was $148,000. The guy who looked like he was out of menace to society, he says, what the F did you give her all that money for and leave yourself with nothing? Then Big Daddy said, here's what you need to do. Hmm. As soon as you get access to a phone, you need to call your ex. And in your sweetest possible voice, you need to say, dear, sweetie, honey, I can't pay you any money sitting in here. So let Ain't that the truth? Shout out to Jamar King. He said, when the hardened gangsters sympathize with you. <laughs> this is, I'm, you know, this, this story is crazy. I've heard of like nightmare scenarios like this. I've never heard anybody going to jail when, when these type of numbers are on the line. Let's make a deal. Then after a few hours in there, one of the guards calls out my name and I exit the holding cell area with the guards. A guard put me in handcuffs and led me to the processing area. I was seated and handcuffed to a metal chair next to an officer who was inputting data into a computer. He pulled up my record. He looked at me and said, wow, what did you say to this judge to get one year in jail? One Wait, year. what I asked? One year I'm in jail. for a year? What? Judge Alden had never said anything about this. All she had said was bailiff, remand Mr. Hart to the custody of the sheriff. And that was all she said. She never said anything about one this year in jail. The officer read from the screen. Well, that's what it says here. You're getting one year in jail for contempt of court. It says you owe $148,000 to your ex-wife. How did you get $148,000 behind on your child support? Asked the officer. And I said, well, it's not really support. I paid my ex almost $1.7 million in assets that we had, which was pretty much all our assets, but I still owe her $148,000 to bring the total oh to $1.8 million in cash up front at the get-go. I also agreed to pay her $12,000 per month in support. So all in all, I'm $148,000 short in terms of immediate cash due. The officer looks at me. Why the hell did you agree to all that, he said. <laughs> Who is the judge in this case, asked the officer. I answered, Judge Leslie Alden. Oh, that explains it, says the cop. Yep, that judge, she really hates men. <sighs> like he put up his mugshot right here. You guys see this thing? This, yo, Benjamin Hart, 726. This is crazy. He went to jail over this. He went to jail over this. After the officer finished inputting my info and giving me an inmate number, I was taken in cuffs to an area and given an orange jumpsuit. I changed into that. The cops Bruh. then took my business clothing, my watch, my phone, my wallet, and everything I had and put it all in a plastic bag for safekeeping to be returned whenever I got out. I was oh then gosh. chained to 12 other inmates, and we were led to our cell block. My cellmate was a Cherokee Indian who said he had been convicted of 47 felonies, most recently attempted murder. But we got... They put him in with someone that was convicted or, or charged with attempted murder. That's crazy. Along fine. So it really looked like Judge Leslie Alden wanted to send me a message. Mm -hmm. This was no white collar work release type program for nonviolent offenders. She put me in the worst hole in Fairfax County, apparently for a year. And it was actually underground. There were no windows. Mm. There are about 1,800 inmates in the Fairfax County Jail. Evidently, the reason Judge Leslie Alden sentenced me only to one year there is that's the maximum amount of time that you can spend in county jail My any gosh. longer and they have to move you to a state prison facility. So I was there for the max. And the way our cell block was set up is there was a common area that's linked to six cells where we slept. Mm. We were locked out of our sleeping cells all day, so we were all in the common area. So the 12 inmates in, the, in our cell block were all in the same small all cement common area all day. And we spent all day just shooting the bull. That's all there is to do in jail. There was one toilet and a shower out in the open in plain view of everyone. And you get used to Oh, man. It's just one toilet and just a shower in front of everyone? Gosh, darn it. ...to it after a while. And I got along fine with everyone, even though mm. most were there on serious violent felonies. And we spent a lot of time talking about how to get me out of there. In <laughs> fact, that was the main... <laughs> and the prisoners are like, look, we, we, we belong here. You don't. And so they're all masterminding ways to try to get this dude out. Topic of conversation. We concluded that what I needed to do was write a letter to the judge and offer a payment plan. My we gosh. talked about how much I would offer. I thought maybe $2,000 a month. They all thought that was way too much. Mm. Problem is, if you can't come up with that money every month, you'll be right, right back here, said the MS-13 guy who was covered in tattoos, including <laughs> tattoos on his face. 
<laughs> Offer her $300 a month, said the white guy with a Nazi swastika tattoo on his neck who looked like Charles Manson. I settled on offering $1,000 per month to Judge Leslie Alden and then see what happens. Everyone in my cell block thought that was way too much. But I had to get out of there. I also figured that Judge Alden isn't stupid. She must know I can't pay my ex anything sitting in here. Mm -hmm. And my ex is supposed to be getting $12,000 a month. But I could not pay that sitting in there. So mm -hmm. it was in everyone's interest to get me out of there pronto so right. I could start making money again. The right. problem is I could not get a pen. We were not allowed to have anything that could be used as a weapon. After three days in there, I got a visit from the head of the prison, the warden himself. He came all the way down to the deepest, darkest hole in the prison to find out what I had done to end up here. Out of the 1,800 inmates, he wanted to talk to me, Ben Hart. I guess my file had landed on his desk, and I guess I was the talk of the prison, and he wanted to hear the story. So how did you get $148,000 behind on your child support, he asked. And why did the judge put you in here? The warden was looking at me through these bars in this small window in the steel door of our cell block. I explained that I had not gotten $148,000 behind on my child support. And then I went through all the basic details of how I paid her close to $1.7 million plus $12,000 a month of support, and all payments were made. But mm. I had fallen $100,000 short on the $1.8 million I had agreed to. Then the judge tacked on another $48,000 for Betsy's attorney's fees and for interest. So oh I just gosh. wasn't able to come up with that final $100,000 plus $48,000. Who was the judge, the warden asked. Judge Leslie Alden, I answered. That explains. Man, I wonder if she's still practicing law. I wonder if she's still a judge. Plains it, said the warden. She's a real man-hater. Looks like <laughs> you really pissed her off. He paused. <laughs> he looked at his file of papers on me. Then he said, even though you've been sentenced here, I'm moving you to work release. Trouble is, we don't have any jobs for you that will help you pay off this $148,000 debt. Gosh, darn. The jobs we have pay $7 an hour. People who are here because they are behind on their child support pay their child support that way. But this is not going to help you get out of your situation. But let me see what I can do about this. I can't have you down here. Huh. About a day later, guards arrive, and they take me to the work release facility. This was low security, so I was able to get a pen and a piece of paper and write a letter to Judge Leslie Alden with my proposal to pay my ex $1,000 per month toward the $148,000 that I owed her, plus keep up with my other obligations under the divorce decree. I didn't hear anything back. I thought, well, I guess I'm here for a year. I started to accommodate myself to this reality. It's amazing how humans can get used to almost any reality over mm. time. Whatever you're saying. He's just, he, at this point, he's on the verge of surrender. Like, I guess I'm just going to be in the county jail for a year. Over $100,000 of unpaid child support and alimony. The situation is, becomes the new normal, the new baseline for existence. Right. And I met some very interesting people in there, including a high-powered attorney who was in there on some kind of fraud. I became friends with a tall black kid named Alan. Who <laughs> Jay Flo said, this is a villain or... This is a villain origin story. <laughs> In a time where judges don't treat men fairly, a man rises from the depths of the abyss. Benjamin Hart comes to full swing of men everywhere. <laughs> He's about 6'6 six, six and was a martial arts expert. When he went to a tall Hold black on. kid named Alan, he was about 6'6", six, six and was a martial arts expert. When he wanted to watch a particular TV show, he would stand in front of the TV in a martial arts pose so that no one would dare try to change the channel. And he and I would have- This is a movie, man. This this, this is the screen. His, his, his clout chasing daughter is writing screenplays. This is the screenplay. This is the movie, Hollywood. Contests to find- I, w I wonder if Daily Wire would make this movie. I should try to I should try to get a hold of someone over there and pitch this to them for 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 our, for our guy Ben Rahart. This is amazing. Doubt who is the quote better man? We would have push up contests, chin up contests, play ping pong, Monopoly, and chess. Pretty much any game we could think of. And he was a good kid, but he was very rambunctious. He was maybe age 18 or 19, and I'm not sure what he was in there for. Probably marijuana possession or something like that. And what he liked to do is practice his karate kicks and punches that would stop one inch from my nose. And I told him, <laughs> Alan, stop doing that. See all these cameras around here? They're going to think you're violent. They're going to take you out of here and put you down in the hole. But Alan was a good kid. He just had a lot of energy. And about mm. half the guys, I would say at least half the guys in the work release program in the jail, were there because they could not make child support or alimony payments. America's jails are filled with these guys, so-called deadbeat dads. And mm. I did not realize until then that, yes, we do indeed still have debtors' prisons in America. Mm. About five days had passed since I had sent my letter to Judge Leslie Alden 
offering to pay Betsy $1,000 per month toward the $148,000 I owed her. My gosh. Again, this would be an additional $1,000 per month on top of the $12,000 per month I was already obligated to pay under the divorce decree. I hadn't heard anything from Judge Alden. Didn't know if the judge even received my letter. I assumed not. But then one day around 5 p.m., I was on my bunk bed reading, and I heard a guard yell, Hart! Benjamin Hart! Benjamin Hart! Is Benjamin Hart in here? Yeah, that's me, I said. Come get your shit and get out of here, the guard said. So Jeez. I went to the booth where they had my stuff. It was all in a plastic bag. My business suit was wrinkled in a mess. But it Mouse, Mouse Crusader says she's retired, by the way. But well, that's, that's a win for society. That's a massive win for society. I'm glad she's retired. Everything was in there. My wallet, my watch, my phone. I called my girlfriend, Wanda, who had become my wife a couple months later. I figured any girlfriend who would put up with this is definitely wife material. I was broken <laughs> in jail, but she had not run for the tall grass to disappear. I told her I was being released and asked her if she could pick me up. Yo, this man's child support and alimony payment is m way more than the average. It's like three times what the average person makes a month. I had been there for eight days and eight nights, and I got out of my orange jumpsuit and back into my wrinkled business suit. And the warden was there to meet me on my way out. He had a bemused look on his face. You'd better write fast and write every day to keep up with your payments, he said. I don't Jeez want to Louise. see you back here. Thank My you, gosh. I said. Thank you for getting me out of the hole and up here. I'm not planning on coming back. The problem was, I still had to pay my ex $12,000 per month, plus now $1,000 per month, for a total of $13,000 per month. This was no joke, especially since I had no business anymore. All my clients were gone. I left jail with $5 in the bank, no clients, and no business. Wanda was my girlfriend. I had met her at a karaoke bar. She's an immigrant from Laos. This guy's a trip, okay? I'm not going to lie. Whatever led to this divorce couldn't have been good for, for his ex to take him to the ringer like this. I call her my best girl. After jail, Wanda and I existed by maxing out my credit cards and Wanda's credit cards to the tune of $65,000 while I rebuilt. I needed to figure out a business that did not involve having clients that Betsy could subpoena and depose. So I developed an online marketing education business. Of course he did. So, um, shout out to... Uh... Shout out to Ben Hart. You guys, if you guys haven't been keeping it, I can't go over the whole saga, but I do want to end with a quick uh, shout out to him and, and his ill breakdancing moves. And this dude is nice. This dude is nice with it. He's nice with it. He's nice with it. Let him cook. I'm letting him cook, Calamity. Anyway, I think that would make an amazing, amazing movie. One time for uh, Ben Hart for rolling with the punches. I'm curious what his daughter's response is going to be. Moral of the story, be careful who you marry. According to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.